Hey everyone, I'm Candace Hunter from The Practical Herbalist, and I wanted to talk a little bit with you guys today about what you can do to build your immune system. The most important thing I can think of is building your immune system daily. The reason we want to do it daily is so that that way you can do it just a little bit at a time. It's like taking one step, you know, the longest journeys begin with a single step, right? One step today to build your immune system, one step tomorrow to build your immune system. You keep working on building it, you keep working on protecting it and taking care of it every single day, and it will take good care of you. So how do you build your immune system, right? That's the big question, and it's one of the biggest questions of our time, in part because we're facing viruses that are more deadly and virulent than we ever have before. At least we are here in America, in the Western world. The best ways that I know of, the two best ways I know of to support your immune system are to do a really good job with your digestion, to take good care of your digestive system and give your body all the nutrition it wants and needs and desires. And then the second way is to reduce your stress. When we're stressed out, our body goes into fight or flight mode. And in fight or flight mode, we don't absorb nutrients very well. We don't eliminate waste very well. We don't repair the damages to our system from whatever, whether it's from, you know, fighting off a virus or whether it's from just, you know, having the stress of the day, worrying about the bills or arguing with your boss. Whatever the reason is that you might be stressed out, your body is, when you're stressed out, your body's not taking care of the repair work it needs to do. If your immune system's trying to fight off or flu or, flu or cold, for instance, let's say it's fighting off an influenza virus, and you've been stressed out for quite a long time, so you've got not done a lot of repair, your body's doing all its fighting on broken ground with under resources. It doesn't have enough of the you know, power, the food, the materials it needs to do the job. And it's doing it in an environment where there's inflammation or there's cellular structures that are not as strong as they could be and all those those body parts aren't they're not optimum so you're not working with a lot you're not working with a great healthy system which makes it a lot harder to fight off that flu or cold reducing stress is really really key to helping you to you know move into um a good digestive support or good immune system support. The other piece is the digestive system, which of course, when you're not stressed out and you are relaxed, your di digestive system's doing its job, which is bringing in nutrition and then using that nutrition, whatever the nutrients are, the water and nutrients, rest, using that to rebuild all the systems that you have and eliminate any wastes. If you've been stressed out a lot, your body probably has a big backlog of waste it's got to remove, and it probably is another giant, long honeydew list of all the things it's got to repair. You got to give it what it needs to do the job. You can't expect your body to repair its cellular structure if you don't give it lots of vitamin C, for instance. Vitamin C is really linked strongly to strong cellular structure. So you want that, right? There are a lot of herbs that you can take that help out with nutrition, and there's a lot of herbs you can take that help out with reducing stress. If, for instance, you're going to be, let's, just, let's talk about stress briefly. Herbs for stress are often adaptogen herbs like Tulsi and Reishi. Uh, rose, rose root, rose root um, is another good one. Those types of herbs help your body. It's like it gives your system a little bit of extra energy. But at the same time, instead of being stimulating like coffee is, it relaxes the system. So it helps bring balance to whatever um, areas are overwrought. It'll help your nervous system relax while staying energized, for instance. Uh, so those are the types of herbs that you're going to be looking at for stress reduction. Uh, you might want to also consider herbs that are... Um, Helping will help you sleep, like passion flower, for instance, or valerian. Those are really good nighttime herbs. Chamomile is a good one, especially if you tend to feel your stress in your stomach or in your, your middle section. Uh, so you want to reduce stress with herbs and add a couple. I often will add a couple of herbs, like I might take Tulsi daily for quite a while or chamomile, depending on, you know, whatever. Whatever it is I've done for my formula. 
And then the other thing I usually include in that formula will be um, herbs that are for digestion. For instance, I might take a little bit of ginger and cinnamon, especially in the winter months when it's cold out. Those will help heat up not only my digestive system, but they'll also give my circulatory system a little bit of extra fire, which is really welcome when it's cold out. Um, I might consider adding elderberry or astragalus to my formula. In fact, I might do both. Elderberry really does a wonderful job of helping you build really strong cells. And astragalus helps your immune system to keep itself balanced and it helps itself to rebuild. So that when it does face a crisis, like it's you know going up against COVID or going up against influenza or one of the many cold viruses, it's got a little bit more oomph to hold its line and not let those viruses into your body. I might consider adding extra garlic every day too. That one is particularly helpful when I know that I really wanna give my immune system an extra boost and I know I might be encountering conditions that like, for me, I think damp cold conditions are the ones that I tend toward garlic more, so wintertime again. Um, so yeah, that, you know, there's a lot of different herbs you can use. My suggestion is to come up with a selection of three to five, maybe six, that you really wanna work with every day. You could potentially put them all into one formula, like in a tincture, for instance, or in a tea, which you take every single day. And if having a daily habit like that is really helpful and, and feeds your nature, do that, definitely do that. If you're a person who has a hard time with a daily habit and likes to shake it up frequently, for instance, then consider keeping a variety of those herbs around in different proportions or in different types. Like you might want to, for instance, make some elderberry syrup that has some cinnamon and ginger in it. And you might wanna keep a tea blend that has some fennel and chamomile in it. And you might wanna keep your Tulsi as just its own tincture, maybe use it as a bitters, like Tulsi and chamomile, consider those as bitters that you can drop into your water every day. And then make sure that you're keeping, you know, a nice variety of spices right on the counter there so they'll be super easy to work with when you're cooking. And then each day you grab one or more of those and make sure every time you sit down to eat, every time you take a drink, that you're looking at which, which one of those might you include. Over the course of every single day doing that, you'll find that you are actually doing a pretty good job of keeping up with building your immune system. So how do you pick which herbs are the best for you? That's a good question. Some of it is gonna be about your constitution, the conditions you're living in, whether you're facing perhaps more stress or you have a history of digestive challenges or whatever. One of the techniques I like to use to check in with myself every day is called alternate nostril breathing. It's a yoga technique, although honestly, you don't have to be doing yoga to do this technique. It's pretty simple. It's one that I will do maybe for a minute or two, once a day. Um, if you're watching a yoga therapist show you how to do it, they're going to tell you to have beautiful posture, to sit up nice and straight. They might suggest using lotus position or sitting in a chair. I've done it that way and it works really wonderfully. I've also done it, you know, where I'm just sitting relaxed and not even thinking about my posture. I've done it while I'm laying down. I've done it standing. So the technique for alternate nostril breathing is pretty simple. You can use either your right or your left hand. I'm gonna use my right today. You take your first two fingers and fold those down. So now you're gonna be using your ring finger and your thumb. And you can just let your pinky do whatever it wants. So your ring finger and your thumb are the two fingers you're gonna to use to close your nostrils. There are two ways to close your nostrils. One of them is to put your thumb or your ring finger straight across the nostril itself to cover the hole. Personally, I don't like that technique as much because it requires me to touch the edges of my nostril. So if I haven't, make sure my hands are absolutely clean and I've touched anything that has any kind of uh, microbes on it, I'm potentially introducing those into my system. Secondly, if I'm breathing out any microbes, like for instance, if I'm a carrier of influenza today and I'm breathing it out, I'm also gonna be getting it on my fingers and I don't like that because then what if I forget to clean my hands immediately after? If I'm doing this in the car on the way to work or you know, at a stoplight or something like that, well, it's probably not a good place to do it. In the parking lot outside work, 
better place, right? So if I'm doing this in the parking lot outside of work, I might not remember to clean my hands. So my suggestion for you is rather than doing this with your covering the nostril hole, I suggest you cover the spot that is, you close your nostrils a little bit higher up on your nose. So I'll show you. It's a lot easier than explaining it. So you notice this spot right here where your the hard, hard part of your cartilage of your nose gets to the soft part. If you gently press there, you'll notice that you can easily close one nostril or the other. And it's not even, it's a very light pressure. It doesn't take much to close it at that point. So when you're doing your alternate nostril breathing, I recommend that you close your nostrils up there. That way you're not touching the surface of your nostrils directly. So it's pretty simple. You're gonna breathe in, you're gonna close one nostril, you're gonna breathe in. You're gonna switch to the other nostril. So open the one that was closed and close the one that was open. You're gonna breathe out, you're gonna breathe in. You're gonna switch again, breathe out, breathe in, and continue on. So I'll show you, it's like this. So breathe out, or breathe in rather, and then switch, breathe out, breathe in, switch, breathe out, breathe in, and then switch, breathe out, breathe in, switch, Breathe out. When I'm doing it, I like to start on one side with an in-breath, then go back and forth as many times as I'm gonna go back and forth, and then end on the opposite side from where I started with an out-breath. You don't have to. You can end and start however you wanna end and start. But that's what I like to do for balance. Part of the key for this technique is that it does help you bring balance to yourself. One of the ways that I use it as well is that as I'm breathing in and out on each side, I'm listening to where I'm thinking about, I'm feeling how easily does the energy or the air flow through that side. For instance, there are days when I notice that my left side is a little bit more congested. The air doesn't flow quite as easily. It's subtle, but it, it's there. Or there might be days where I notice that my right side is a little bit drier. It's not as damp as the left. Those tell me, those kinds of qualities tell me two things. First of all, it shows me that there is an imbalance, that I'm not quite as balanced as I could be. And then secondly, I think of the right side as being the um, yin or the, the stillness, the still space from which my immune system is gathering all its energy. So it's the place where the nutrition and the resources wait to be used. And if that space isn't flowing comfortably and easily, then it means it's out of balance. So I might want to do something to help it out. Like for instance, if it's really dry, I might want to consider adding a little marshmallow leaf to my tea that day. And I think of the left side of my body, or the left nostril anyway, as indicating the more active principle, the movement, the motion, the fire of my body. So the yang. And when I'm breathing in and out on the left side, I'm noticing like, let's say that one's a little bit congested. It's not flowing as freely as I might like. It means that I might need a little bit of fire to like dry it up and, and open the tissues back up. So that might be a day where I add a little extra cinnamon to my morning tea or a little ginger, you know, something to fire things up a little bit. So I'll adjust my daily formula a little bit based on how, in, how much imbalance I notice um, and then based on what the qualities are of the imbalance that I'm noticing. So you can do that or you can just you know, breathe for a few moments just to see in general, is your breath flowing easily and comfortably or are you noticing it doesn't feel good? And if it doesn't feel good, look at which herbs might help you out there. So alternate nostril breathing is a nice easy technique for finding balance and for recognizing where your imbalances may be. It's also a good one, yogis, yoga, yoga therapists and yoga practitioners will tell you that it's a good one for bringing balance and helping you to de-stress anyway. And then make your daily formula. Choose the herbs you wanna work with daily. Work with them, work with them every day. Work with them for the long term. You'll build a beautiful, healthy, strong immune system that will be able to tackle anything. If you do it every day, one step at a time.